I love a good get together with my friends. Catching up, getting the goss, having a cheeky drink, all that good stuff. Sometimes it gets to the point where you're all caught up, but you still want the party to keep going. And of course, you want an excuse to keep drinking. And that's when someone pulls out Cards Against Humanity. Don't get me wrong, I used to love a good game of Cards Against Humanity, but I also used to think I was going to marry Rupert Grint. Did I feel those feelings? Yes. Do I stand by them now? Of course not. Sorry, Rupert. I'm here to tell you about 10 games that you can easily whip out at a party and that people will love, that are easy to learn and play, and that far surpass the outdated and sometimes harmful gameplay of Cards Against Humanity. If you still like Cards Against Humanity, that's fine too. You can maybe check out these games and change things up a bit if you like the sound of them. Let's get to it. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video. That would be, that'd be really cool. First, a brief word from our sponsors. This video is sponsored by Misty Mountain Gaming. Head to MistyMountainGaming.com to take advantage of their buy two, get one free holiday specials. Playing a game of Skull takes a lot of guts, a little brains, and a ton of luck. In Skull, each player receives a set of four cards, three with the comforting illustration of a beautiful bloom, and one with the titular terrifying Skull. Rounds consist of three phases, a card playing phase, where the players take it in turns to secretly add a flower or their skull to the growing stack, the bluffing phase, where people can instead bet on how many cards they can reveal from their own pile, which must first be revealed in full, and other player stacks without encountering a skull, and the reveal phase, wherein the player who bet the most cards attempts to successfully fulfill said bet. If a player inadvertently turns over a skull, they must then randomly lose one of their cards, which only serves to add yet another layer to an otherwise deceptively simple, adrenaline-inducing bluffing and betting game. Of course, being so simple also may skull a really brilliant beginner board game to introduce to inexperienced players, or to whip out at a party. Based on a long time piece public domain property, a game called Celebrity, Monica's is the modern day version of the classic family board game Articulate. As in Articulate, players take turns to describe a word to their teammates without uttering the phrase itself. What makes Monica's better than Articulate is the fact that its word pool focuses on the names of famous people, religious icons, mythical animals, and yet more bizarre figures of cultural significance, making every single card interesting to describe. There aren't any obscure geographical locations here. Additionally, games are split into three separate rounds, with round one sticking to the basic formula I just explained, round two cutting descriptions down to just one word, and round three involving a lot more gesturing and flailing of the arms like charades. Do you like my flail? <laughs> this means that playing monikers really get stale, as each round mixes things up just enough to keep the game fresh and fast moving, while still being a really brilliant beginner board game that's suitable for players of any skill level. Perfect for a party. I know what you're thinking, Liv, this looks like a numbers game. What is this, a math party? Not in the least, because I personally hate numbers. I scraped a C in GCSE maths and I'm happy with that. But this is a game that is such a laugh that the numbers simply don't factor in. Was that a maths pun? Someone let me know in the comments if that was a maths pun, please. Am I, am I smart? Please tell me. Six Nymphed is a game all about trying to deduce what your fellow players might do and, honestly, trying to completely screw them over so you can walk away with the lead. So it has that cheeky element to gameplay that we're all looking for when we have a couple of bevies in us, and it's not so cheeky that you might bring up someone's unresolved trauma by accident, like with Cards Against Humanity. You have four rows of cards in which you have to place down another card next to it that is close enough to it but isn't a lower number than it. If you place down the sixth card in that row, you have to pick up all the cards in that row. You do not want that. The person with the lowest number in the end wins. Once again, you're probably like, Liv, this is a numbers game and it's boring. In that case, can you like stop criticizing me for one minute? The fun of this game comes from protecting... <laughs> The fun of this game comes from predicting other people's moves and messing them up or watching them squirm because they have left themselves with nothing else to do but play a really bad card or by figuring out when to play the lowest number possible in order to have yourself pick up cards. Why would you do that? So that another person's plans for the round are completely ruined, of course. This game really is spicier than you might think at a single glance. 
we will likely play it in a party game live stream at the end of the year, so keep an eye out for that on the channel. It's pretty much the end of the year now, so keep an eye out for a couple of weeks from now, I, I guess. Ku is up there with the party game greats for me. You have deception, you have strategy, hidden roles, and it's the perfect way to kick off a board game night. Or a fantastic little game to seamlessly slot into a get together. Let's be real, sometimes we have friends who aren't as obsessed with board games as us, and they can recoil in fear when you bring out yet another game they have to learn. But with Ku, it's not like you're whacking out a huge Twilight Imperium box. Ku is inoffensively small, meaning that hackles shouldn't raise when you suggest it. Have I made your group of friends sound enough like lions at the watering hole yet? <laughs> Ku's rules are simple and can be learned by playing, as the card's abilities are listed on them, making this game a breeze to play. Also, just like with Cards Against Humanity, there are tons of opportunities to make lifelong enemies. What more could you want from your friends that you haven't seen in ages? Uh, I wonder how my friends are doing this. <laughs> Despite what the slightly unpalatable name might suggest, Cockroach Poker isn't actually a gambling game, so do encourage your kids to get involved in the festive cocky roach activities. This section was written by Alex Meehan. <laughs> that said, there will be plenty of bluffing involved, so if you've got a terrible poker face, then we're sorry for the steamrolling you're about to receive. In Cockroach Poker, players have a handful of delightful creatures, such as rats, spiders, and of course the titular cockroach, which they must attempt to fob off on their fellow players by passing them off as something else. For example, if I handed someone a fly but I said it was a scorpion and they believed me, then they would have to attempt to pass it off as the same thing or something else. This continues until someone is rightfully called out as lying or wrongfully accused, with the card going to whichever player slipped up. If someone manages to collect four of the same creature, then they are declared the loser, and everyone else wins. That's nice, I think? Cockroach Poker is a fantastic party game for Christmas because it reminds us all to care for the lonely little critters shunned during the festive season. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to play to boot. Alex Meehan! I'm Alex Meehan and I love pigeons and I love cocky roaches. From the same creators as Cockroach Poker, we submit to you Cheating Moth, my personal favourite of the two. Don't get me wrong, both are phenomenal games, but I've never seen a game so effectively weaponized cheating as a mechanic before. In this game, you place down cards into the middle of the table until you're out of cards, which alone doesn't sound too radical. But in this game, one person acts as the guard bug, keeping an eye on their sneaky little friends until they catch one of them dropping a card below the table, flinging it over their shoulder, or slipping it up the sleeve of their shirt. A map job is special. <laughs> If the guard bug catches them, then they pick up the card they dropped and they become the guard bug. But if the guard bug thinks they cheated and they didn't, then the guard bug has to pick up the card themselves. So there's no throwing around accusations with no founding. This is a serious bug game. Just kidding, it's ridiculous. It's a fun basic card game with a cheeky twist and we know it'll be a hit with you and your friends at your next party. The fun of bringing Cards Against Humanity to a party is being able to pull out the deck and get people playing pretty much instantly. Few people are ready to listen to lengthy game rules two beers into an evening after all. So another card game that takes less than a minute to explain but will keep everyone engaged for longer than it should is Medium. You take on the role of psychics, trying to access each other's thoughts, going round the circle, playing two at a time. You and your partner must place down cards which have random words on them. For example, you have fruit and they have I. You then have to think of a word that links the two, shouting out your answers at the same time. If you both say the same word, maybe grape, then you collect the points and move on to the person next to you, pulling new cards. However, if you shouted grape and they went with lychee, you move to a new round as a pair, trying to link those new words together. This continues three times until you either mind meld and you say the same word, or move on without scoring any points. It's an incredibly simple concept, which quickly becomes addictive once you get a few successful guesses. There are endless combinations of words in the deck, and you can easily add your own, Ella Cards Against Humanity style, to fill it with inside jokes and your group's humor. Is anyone able to link board games and great content with me? Three, two, one, Dicebreaker! Oh, we both said it! No way! <laughs> this section was written by Maddie Cullen. <laughs> Are you up for a big promotion at work? 
Maybe you're thinking of going in another career direction altogether. Well, this won't help. It's Fun Employed, a simple party game in which you are trying to get a very real job like an astronaut, lawyer, or a nurse, but with ridiculous qualifications like being sneaky, not being able to lie, or having a Russian accent. What was that? <laughs> God, what? I'm so sorry. Some of these may be easier to spin into a convincing argument to be hired than others. Despite that though, you have to make it work. You have to convince your friends that your slender frame will make you the perfect fireman. To do that, you might say something like, in an emergency situation like a fire or a code 1171, that may or may not be accurate, you need to be able to get through the tightest of spaces in order to not get trapped at the fire or save a baby or a fellow slender framed person. Without me, you're risking lives. What about saving people without a slender frame? What? You might do a better job than me with convincing people of that one. Wow, Dicebreaker hired me. What a rookie error. This is a perfect one for when you're a couple of drinks in and you're ready to get silly. Whoa, invite me to your next party. What fish could be more symbolic to parties than the humble salmon? With the body of a dancer and a constitution capable of downing infinite Sambuca shots, the salmon deserves recognition as the scaly king of partying. In Happy Salmon, players are invited to yell the action shown on their card, which can include one of several respectful ways to worship the party fish, such as the high five palm clap, the pound it fist bump, and of course the quintessential Happy Salmon. A mutual exchange of frenzied forearm slapping. The purpose of this yelling is to find another player with a matching card so that you can perform its action, discard it, and eventually get through the entire deck. It may be a laughably simple game, but Happy Salmon is incredibly effective at getting people on their feet and mingling with each other, which is ultimately the goal of any good party. Also, considering how loud a session of Happy Salmon can get, it's almost the perfect board game for kids. It's also the perfect board game for a few adults with few beverages inside them. Buddy, buddy, buddy! I know a lot of you know this one, but it's a classic, and the people who only play Cards Against Humanity, they might not have played this one before. And I think it's the perfect combination of welcoming to large numbers of players, easy to play, and providing a ton of duplicitous entertainment. You can actually see myself and Maddie playing Werewolf with the Oxra folks in the video being linked now. Before you go over to watch, I'm sorry, okay? I don't know anyone's tells. I don't know who's good at lying. I'm sorry. <clears throat> The thing is though, you can get to know people really well by playing this game. That's what all of these games have in common really. They work great as icebreakers. When you're a little anxious at a party, other people might be too, and so arranging for a fun activity can put people tremendously at ease. If you haven't played Werewolf before, it's very simple. There's at least one werewolf in the village played by one of the players, and the rest of the players are villagers who are trying to root out the werewolf. The werewolf being someone who gets to kill someone off each night. There are some variants like Mafia and some spin-offs like Werewords, but the core concept of finding the werewolf or the evil character remains the same. You can also take up interesting roles like the Seer, who can point out one person each night and ask if they're a werewolf, or the Healer, who can protect one person each night. There are tons of variants and it's a game you'll come back to again and again. And that was Dicebreaker's top 10 party games that aren't Cards Against Humanity. Don't forget that a lot of these are pretty reasonably priced, so you can check them out in the affiliate links in the description, which we will be paid for, but you don't have to use them if you don't want to. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Make sure to check out the other videos that are popping up right now. Head to dicebreaker.com for articles and more. And as always, have a lovely day and a rockin' party. <laughs> Oh, I'm not invited, am I? No, that's fair. Yeah, okay. All right, okay, okay.